Welcome to another broadcast from Victory Church Odessa with Gian, Tracy, and all the wonderful church members. Today, you will listen to the Word of God, wonderful worship and praise music, and the practical application from Scripture for your daily life. Our goal is to exalt the name of our Lord Jesus and to encourage you to develop more faith as you reflect on the Bible. We hope you will enjoy this program. Now let me introduce you to our pastor, Gian. Forgiveness and Grace, Worship Service 356, August 20th, 2023. Victory Church, Odessa. If you are interested in downloading the bulletin, it's very simple. All that you need to do is to use your phone, open the camera, point towards the QR code, and hit on the link that you see on the screen. Otherwise, you can just go directly to the website bchurch.us, look for the tab bulletins, and voila. And you can have access to our 24 hours programming video and audio. If you want to watch our 24-hour video, the website is giantv.mygiancarlo.com. I see that. <laughs> and also, if you prefer audio only, it's here. VictoryRadio.us, 24-7, serving you with all of our hearts. Forgiveness and grace is the topic of this message, and I thank you for being here with us today. Forgiveness and grace actually defines the Lord's heart. Do you realize that? You know that the Lord God has so much love for you. He wants to give you more and more of your love. All that you need to do is just to, to be willing to receive His love in your heart. And of course, you need to be humble to acknowledge your wrongdoings. <laughs> That's a problem, right? Because we all like the idea of being loved, receiving God's love, right? But the question is, how willing are you, my friend, to acknowledge your wrongdoings? Precisely here is the core of our problem. And uh, this is what we will discuss today. And we are going to review three different cases about forgiveness and grace from our Lord. And we're going to study how the mercy of God... This, his forgiveness flows through the life of people. And we're going to study three different cases. The first one will be the thief on Calvary. The second one will be the woman that was caught in adultery. And the third one is the apostles when they left the Lord Jesus alone. So are you ready for this study? Okay, well, let's start with the first case, and we are going to read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The reading comes from the easy-to-read version. We pray the Lord Jesus will guide us. Chapter 23 of the Gospel of Luke, verses 39 through 43. One of the criminals hanging there began to shout insults to Jesus. Are you the Messiah? Then... Save yourself and save us too. But the other criminal stopped him. He said, you should fear God. We will die soon. You and I are guilty. We deserve to die because we did wrong. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you being, begin ruling as king. Then Jesus said to him, I promise you. Today you will be with me in paradise. This is a very beautiful example of the grace of God, the forgiveness of God. First of all, I want to tell you that it is a fact that many people blame God for their lives. Like this guy. He was saying, aren't you the Messiah? Do something about it. And by the way, Save me. Help me. You got to do something to rescue me. Th that is the approach that some people have, you know. In the midst of their troubles, they blame the Lord God. Now, the other, the other guy, the one that people call him the good thief, <laughs> which I don't understand why they call him the, the good thief. <laughs> 
well, because there is no good thief. The thieves are thieves, right, period. But people call them that way because he was willing to acknowledge his own responsibility and also to acknowledge the lordship of our Lord Jesus. That's important. That's important. But I want to tell you something that is controversial. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verses 31 and 32, there is also the description of this passage from a different angle. You know, Luke wrote this, this exactly as you see it here. One guy saying insults to the Lord, the other guy being nice to the Lord, asking for forgiveness type, right? Okay, well, in the Gospel of Mark, it doesn't say that. Actually, it says that people said to each other, people in general, including Pharisees and teachers of the law, he saved others, but he can't save himself. Actually, in the verse 32 of Mark 15, it says clearly that the criminals on the crosses, besides Jesus, also said bad things to him. So who is right? Mark? saying that both criminals were saying those things? Or Luke, saying that one was saying the insults and the other was nice. Is there a conflict here in the Bible? Aha, I am curious now. Well, it's very simple. In order to explain this to you, I need to tell you the importance of timing. Timing. So at the time when when both of these thieves were hanging there at the very beginning of that moment is what Mark is writing. When they both, the, the, both of those criminals were hanging on crosses next to the Lord Jesus, in that moment, both criminals were listening to the people. At that point, they were just listening and the people, remember, including Pharisees, and teachers of the law, and everybody else, those people were insulting the Lord. They were accusing the Lord, saying to him, but he can't save himself. So, what happened as a result of that? Both criminals listening to the crowd, saying those things, they feel kind of uh, provoked to say the same things to Jesus. So, in fact, both said that because the Bible doesn't have necessarily conflicts like this is true and this is wrong. I want you to see that. Luke said the truth. Mark also says the truth. So, I explain this again. It's timing. At the very beginning of this process, when both thieves were crucified with the Lord Jesus, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law and the rest of the people were yelling and insulting because they wanted the Lord Jesus to be crucified. You get that. Those thieves felt provoked, instigated by the mass of people there to say the same type of things. That is why Mark says the criminals on crosses besides Jesus also said bad things to him. Now, for Luke... The perspective is different because he, he is not saying that the other guy didn't say the bad thing either. He is not saying that. Luke basically is focusing on something that is what he wanted us to hear. The Lord God allowed this difference between what Mark says and what Luke says so we can understand today what is the reason. And the reason has to do with the message of today. It's about forgiveness and grace. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever been wrong in your life? <laughs> what a question, right? Have you ever been wrong? Of course you have. Me too. And you know what is interesting? Sometimes we persist and insist saying, I am right. And as a result of that strict, firm, stubborn position, we just make more and more mess. 
because we say, I am right. This is how I see it. Correct? And as a result of that, there is pain, people get hurt. So, in fact, we were convinced we were right until something comes up. And you know that always something comes up. And eventually, when that thing comes up, it's like the lights come on. It's the realization. Well, actually, I don't think it was a good thing to say that. Well, actually, it was bad when I did this and that. That was not a good idea. Do you understand what I am talking about? The magical moment of realizing that you were wrong? It's something so strange. It is something so peculiar. Not everybody has that experience. I'll tell you that. But some people have that experience. I have lived that experience. Realizing that I was saying something that wasn't correct, that I was wrong. Realizing that I made a mistake. You know, my friend, that's beautiful. I don't care how other people can see it, but... The fact that I am able to see that I was wrong, to me, is beautiful. Because it allows me to face the fact that I need to have some sort of compassion because I was wrong. And I'm kind of asking, please try to understand me. You know, I was too stubborn, too strict. You know, I, I didn't want it to bend So you see, being wrong, not necessarily is that bad. (laughs) Not that we want to be wrong, right? Because we want to be right. But the fact that sometimes we are wrong takes us to this point of realization. Where magically, if you allow me the word, the power of God comes somehow, inexplicably. Simply, you just realize Boy, that was bad. I was wrong. And then you change your opinion. That, my friend, is what happened to this thief that we call the good thief. Because as you read with me, you heard me quoting Mark 15. Both were insulting the Lord. Both were saying the same things they heard. And you see, this is what happens all the time. Sometimes we just repeat what other people say. Do you agree? People just repeat what they hear other people are saying. We don't, hear, we don't even have evidence of things. We have not been there. We are not witnesses of something. We don't have the information. We just repeat. <laughs> well, that happened to these two thieves. And they thought... We are going to get out of this situation because it makes sense. If we push this guy, maybe he will come down from that cross and we too. But the miracle happened in the heart of this guy who realized this is just wrong. That is why here in Luke, if you are so kind to read with me, here it says the other criminal is stopped the guy, and said, you should fear God. We will die soon. You and I are guilty. We deserve to die because we did wrong. But this man has done nothing wrong. You see how beautiful is that realization? The guy was saying bad things as the other guy was, as the people were. But the realization came, the light, the truth The acknowledgement, I was wrong. No, this man has done nothing wrong. That is why I told you earlier, some people blame God for their lives. But we need to say things like this guy. But the Lord God has done nothing wrong. There you go, my friend. When you realize that God has done nothing wrong, it's when you are getting closer to the truth. 
Because the Lord God has done nothing wrong to you. Nothing wrong. He has given you life, opportunities. You have made decisions like this guy. And by acknowledging that, he was ready to go to the next step when he is asking God, the Lord Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you begin ruling as king. What is that? Is the acknowledgement of the Lord Jesus' lordship. When you begin to rule as a king, I get it. I get it. I was wrong. I blame God for my problems. I was upset. I was repeating things. I get it. But now I need to declare this to you, Lord God. When you come back in your kingdom, Jesus, meaning the same idea of when I die, I want to be on your kingdom. I want to be part of your kingdom. Then is when the Lord Jesus answered to this guy, I promise you, today you will be with me in paradise. So here is the first case that I'm presenting to you about how forgiveness and grace works. It doesn't matter really what the criminal did. What saved him was, even though in the last moment of his life, he is about to die, even then, being wrong, he had the opportunity to change. And suddenly he goes, I got it. I understand now. He has done nothing wrong. I fear God. I don't want to die eternally. I want to have this eternal life. Jesus is offering to everybody. I want that. And then is when the Lord Jesus saved them. Case number one. Case number two. This reading comes from John chapter 8, verses 4 forward. Two screens here with the scriptures. Pharisees said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman had, was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses commands us to stone to death any such woman. What do you say we should do? They were saying this to trick Jesus. They wanted to catch him saying something wrong so that they could have it a charge against him. But Jesus stooped down <laughs> and he started writing on the ground with his finger. The Jewish leaders continue to ask him their questions. Interesting. Listen to this. Jesus stood up and said, anyone here who has never sinned should throw the first stone at her. Then Jesus stood down again and wrote on the ground. When they heard this, they began to leave one by one. The older men left first, and then the others. Jesus was left alone with the woman standing there in front of him. He looked up again and said to her, <laughs> Where did they all go? Did no one judge you guilty? She answered, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, I don't judge you either. You can go now, but don't sin again. This is the story of the woman caught in adultery. Second case that I present to you, reading from John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. So let's talk about facts here. Facts. She was guilty. She was in, in an act of adultery. We don't know the reasons, but where is the guy? As far as I'm concerned, adultery is when two people are involved. In a sexual relationship, right? Two people, man and a woman, and one is married. Otherwise, it's fornication if they are single. But one is married, so that is considered adultery. So she was guilty. We don't argue that. But where is the guy? Where is the guy? All this seems to indicate that these Pharisees, which are air experts in criticize others. Religious people always pointing fingers, trying to find someone to put them down so they can look good. It seems to indicate that these people, they planned this. It's possible that the guy was part of the group. It's possible that he even enjoyed having this woman in bed. 
It's possible that there is money involved. We don't know the details, but the point is, we know she was guilty. But why in the world is just her the one that is brought to the Lord Jesus? Where is the guy? Those people that are mean, like these Pharisees, all that they want is to put people down. People fail. Do you fail, my friend? Have you failed in your life? Have you done something wrong in your life? Of course you have. Me too. Have you been caught when you did what is wrong? Have you? I have. Oh, you haven't. I forgot you are an angel. (laughs) I'm sorry. I forgot that you are so holy. Forgive me this passage. Let's do this. Don't listen to chapter number two. I mean, this Second case, okay, it's because that doesn't apply to you. You don't have any wrongdoings in your life. You never got caught by God, right? 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 <laughs> okay, let's be honest, people. We all make mistakes. We all fail. We all get caught one way or other. We are being discovered in our wrongdoings in some point of our lives. And it's not totally bad. I want you to see the end of this story. This woman obviously was acting wrong. I'm not defending her. But the outcome of the story is her forgiveness. And that is what we need to try to learn today. Now, facts. There are people that they just love to put others down. And there is a reason why. They always want to look better. By pointing out the mistakes and sins of the rest. Now, here's the interesting part. While they are accusing this woman and they are saying all those type of things, here's the Lord Jesus who simply goes to the ground. And I hope you are enjoying my socks. Thank you, Mary. You see this? (laughs) Okay, let's go to the story. Here is the Lord Jesus writing on the ground, probably with his finger, things. We don't know anything about what he did write because there is no record of that. But what we know is that when he is writing, those people start to leave one at a time, starting with the oldest ones. That tells us that probably he was writing commandments. Commandment number one, commandment number two, three, four, etc. As he is writing, the teaching, the reading tells us that one at a time, starting with the old ones, started to leave. And it makes sense when you think about it, because the older you are, more mistakes you have in your life. When you are young, you don't have all all those sins that you have when you are old. (laughs) But particularly when the Lord Jesus is writing all the commandments, it's not the same thing when there are just two commands, but there are ten commands. (laughs) You understand? Okay. So let's go to truths in this story. Beautiful truths that will inspire you. Humiliation sometimes saves us. And let me tell you one more time this, because it's so important. Being humiliated sometimes will save you. Now, you are thinking, I don't like that. Well, maybe you don't like it, but it's a truth. This humiliation brought this woman to a point of confrontation with herself. To see the reality of her life. Yeah, she could be in so much need for money, perhaps. Maybe she was infatuated with these men. Maybe. We don't know the reasons. But the truth is that that was wrong. Sin always will take you to a place where you are going to be humiliated. Whether it's relationships, money management... Any type of decisions you make, when you are wrong, when you are sinning, there are going to be consequences, and then 
the humiliation because it's very, very possible. When anybody, anyone, us, me, you, whomever, is humiliated by the consequences of the wrong actions or poor decisions, and we are there exposed in the eyes of our family and friends when they ask, and what, what happened? What happened with your work? Well, blah, 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 I lost it. And, and what happened with your marriage? Well, blah, 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 family destroyed. And, and what happened with this? Blah, blah, blah. And w when we are exposed and we have to tell people about our current conditions after sin, for whatever reason, it's humiliating. But the humiliation sometimes will take us to a point of salvation, like happened to this woman. Because it's possible, friends, that if this woman was doing this wrong thing, it's possible that if she didn't get caught, maybe she will continue doing it. That is why when you fail and you have troubles and you are humiliated, it's not totally bad, think about it. Because maybe that is the humiliation you needed to be saved. And the second truth is that forgiveness comes with humility. When you are humble, look at this woman. She was embarrassed there in front of everybody, in front of the Lord Jesus. And when the Lord saw that, you can, can you imagine how embarrassing that could be? It's truly embarrassing. The humiliation of our poor decisions. The humiliation of our failures. The humiliation of not being successful. The humiliation of not having this or not having that. The humiliation of whatever type of context that is not like people will say, oh, that's nice, but the opposite. Oh, I'm sorry. That humiliation is what this woman lived. She is in, in the very presence of the Lord Jesus. And, and the Lord, after writing all this, he, he is just looking at this woman. She is looking at this woman's eyes. Perhaps the same way the Lord God is looking at you today looking into your eyes and knowing that you are embarrassed, knowing that you feel awful about what you have done, knowing that it was a bad thing to do, and now you feel very, very sad. That moves the Lord God to forgive you. The forgiveness of God comes with humility. Interesting, huh? She never said, I'm sorry to him. And yet, the Lord said, it's okay. I forgive you. Just do me a favor, okay? Don't do that again. You see the grace? With God, you will experience forgiveness, but also you will experience grace. Grace is that. The forgiveness that we will give so this woman will be like, okay, well, we get it. You know, they are not against you anymore. Fine, you can go. And, uh, but, but woman, let's, let's evaluate what happened here, okay? And then we will be mean to make sure that we make her feel really uncomfortable. That is what we do. But the grace of God is different. The grace of God leads us to see in people when they are truly repented. This woman was embarrassed. The tone of her voice, her demeanor, the fact that maybe she was not able to put her eyes on the Lord, just the head down. All those are little details that tell you the humility of someone, and then is when forgiveness comes. 
when you find that someone is humble enough and admits his sin, sometimes they don't even say the words, but you see that they are truly repented, is then when you have to be very gracious and stop the beating and just be gracious. Gracious. Third case. The reading comes from Matthew 26, verse 31 and 32. Jesus told the followers, Tonight, you will all lose your faith in me. The scriptures say, I will kill the shepherd and the sheep will run away. But after I'm killed, I will rise from death. I, then I will go into Galilee. I will be there before you go there. Third case. The Lord knows that we will fail him. The Lord knows that you will fail him. In everything, the Lord God always has a plan. In everything, my friend, he always has a plan. He had a plan for the disciples, apostles. He knew each one of them by name and skills and abilities. He knew them. He saw the leadership in Peter. He saw the kindness in John. He saw the character in Matthew, Levi before. He knew each one of them. But the Lord God never was afraid of the character of his disciples. The Lord Jesus was not like, I'm concerned with this Peter because, you know what, I'm just thinking, oh, I know. Eventually, he is going to betray me. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Jesus, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because he's going to betray me three times. Oh, the rooster. Don't show me a rooster. That freaks me out. I know Peter. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous just to think about that type of attitude from the Lord Jesus. The Lord, the Lord knew it. He told them. I know that you all will lose your faith in me. And it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I know you will. Because the scriptures tells me that. That the sheep will run away. But I want you to know something, guys. After I'm killed, and when I come back to life, I will go to Galilee. And I will be there before you go there. Meaning what? Meaning that the Lord knew that all the disciples that were willing to repent, out of the 12, 11 were willing to repent. He already forgave them. In fact, I want you to know that the Lord God, the Lord Jesus, had plenty of love even for Judas. If only he could repent. Because the love of God for his disciples moves him to forgive them. Even when we have not even said, I'm sorry. The Lord God ha has so much love for you. That he already forgave you for whatever things you are going to do. And you have not even done that thing, much less you have said, I'm sorry. But the Lord God already forgave you. That, that, that is the love of God, the forgiveness of God, and the grace of God. In His ability to move back and forth in time, the Lord God knows everything, has a plan. Always He has a plan for His disciples and for you. He has a plan for you. He knows about your skills. He knows about your intelligence and strengths. But he also knows about your weaknesses. He also knows about your mistakes, your temptations, and when you're going to mess things up. And yet, he's willing to love you and forgive you, even when you have not even said, I'm sorry. My friends, that is forgiveness and grace. Forgiveness and grace. Okay. So, after a quick evaluation of those examples of how the forgiveness and grace from our Lord God flows in the life of people, 
How do you feel about the relationship between yourself and God? How do you feel? We saw the three examples. Right? How do you feel now? Is the relationship between the Lord God and you, how do you feel now? Do you feel like uh, you're happy that you're close to God? Or do you feel like, man, I got to work on myself a lot. (laughs) Which takes me to a very important question. How can you define the word repentance, my friend? What is the meaning of the word repentance to you? Is repentance a feeling? What do you think? Well, uh, maybe. But the thing is, uh, I'm reasonable, you know. I reason. I don't live by my emotions. I don't act ba- based on my feelings. Yeah, well, that's true to a certain degree. But the truth is, you also are an emotional being. You can feel really happy at some point, and really sad at another point, and angry at some point, and afraid at another point, and calm at another moment. And yes, you have feelings, and you cannot deny those feelings and emotions, because that is, my friend, the way the Lord God made us. The Lord God made us to be emotional. And also reasonable. So again, is repentance a feeling? To a certain degree, it is. There is a feeling inside of us. A feeling that makes us feel actually in a place of confusion. Moved to do things. Moved to do other things and to say things. But is it possible that repentance is just the conviction that we fail to God? It's a conviction. It's not just the feeling, you know, I feel bad for what I have done. No, it's, it's you're convicted and you say, ah, you know what, this, this is horrible. This just, just shows that I have no character whatsoever. I'm convicted. I, I am failing to God. Well, repentance also is part of that. Now, is it possible that repentance is based on fear of God? Oh, you know, I I am really afraid that God can send me to hell. I, I am really afraid that He can send something and kill me and destroy me. Is that repentance? Necessarily, no, but somehow it's good. It's good to experience the fear of God. When we, when we do things, friends, and and we see the consequences of those things, we are like, but how in the world could I do such a thing? Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever thought of that? Do you remember a time in your life when you realized, oh my goodness, why? Why did I do that? Have you ever been by yourself, hidden your own forehead, and you say, dum, dum, dum? Have you used other words? <laughs> I'm not going to say the words. You know the words. And maybe some of us use other thing other than the hand on the forehead. Something heavier. Solid. And we use other word that is more strong, right? And we said, I am a boom. <laughs> because eventually we say, oh, this was bad. And then we realize, you know, you cannot fool the Lord God. He is going to get you. You know what is funny? It's funny to hear expressions people have, like the word karma. It's all karma, they say. Well, they can say whatever, you know. Other people call them gravity. <laughs> Have you heard that? Yeah, some people call them gravity. Because gravity brings things down. 
there is a consequence. I release this, it's going to come down. There are laws. Laws that are designed by God to teach us things. So repentance to a certain degree has to do with the fear of God. I don't want to get punished for this. So to some people, repentance is just the awareness of the consequences of my poor decisions. They are just aware. They say, you know what? I am repenting of this because I am aware the beating is about to come. <laughs> I know what is going to happen. It's just a matter of time. I see it coming. <laughs> Repentance also could be, when you think about it, is that maybe, my friend, maybe your heart is crying out in hope. Your heart is crying out in hope. Your hope is that way that you say, I just hope the Lord God will forgive me. Maybe repentance has to do with that too. Repentance is not just feeling bad and embarrassed and desperate. Perhaps repentance is, you know what? It is an act of faith. It's an act of faith. Maybe that is what is happening, really. It's faith moving forward, moving you, because you know there is one God that can do wonders for you. I want to take you for a moment to a home where there are little ones. And they get caught by doing something wrong. And suddenly the, the dad or the mom says to the kids, if you guys tell me who did this, I promise you, I will not spank you. I will do something to punish you, but I will not spank you. If you confess... When you say that in a, in the, in the home, in a context of a home, you will see that there are some kids that they immediately will say, I did it that, mom, I did it. Because to a certain degree, repentance is also an act of faith. Like this kid who believes in his father and his mother and says, I, I know my dad is, is gonna do what he says. Don't you think it's beautiful? Repentance actually is at the same time an act of faith. It's a desire to be right with God. Who doesn't want to be right with God? Even those who say that they don't want to be right with God, they want to be right with God. Even those who say that I don't believe in God, they expect somehow that for a miracle, they will be right with God, and there is not going to be hell. <laughs> Somehow everything will be fine. Well, repentance is your deepest desire to be right with God. And you should do it. Because from the deepest part of your soul, you are saying, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. And there is nothing wrong with wanting that. I want to go to heaven. What should I do? How can I deserve that? How can I earn it? And perhaps repentance is also a way to prove that I am forgiven. When you just say, you know, I don't want to do that again. Because I'm forgiven. Because ultimately, repentance is that, right? Repentance is not just all those feelings and those conclusions. At the end, repentance is, I'm not going to keep doing what I'm doing going in this direction. I'm going to turn totally 180 degrees. I'm going to go in this other direction. You understand? So together we reviewed the experiences of others directly with the Lord Jesus. 
So now, in a very direct and personal way, how do you feel about the Lord Jesus dying on the cross for you? How do you feel about the Lord Jesus dying on the cross for you? How do you feel? And some people say, well, uh, you know, maybe, maybe it's just a nice story that he died for us, you know? Maybe it's just the nicest story to make us feel good, you know? Other people say, no, I, I know it's true, uh, but that is just, uh, it's history, you know? It's true, he, he existed in Israel 2,000 years ago, and yeah, I, I get it. He was real, and they crucified him, fine. But, but just, that's just history. And now other people say, well, is this possible to apply only to those who believe? Because I, I know it's not just a, a nice story. I know it's not just history. But I think only applies to those who believe. And I don't believe. That's the problem. Some people say that. It is true, but the forgiveness Jesus brings only applies to those who believe. I just don't see how this can be personal with me. That is the problem some people have to experience the ultimate forgiveness. Jesus dying on the cross for you. And he did. The Holy Spirit, my friend, is right now upon you. The Spirit of God has been showing you again and again and again in different angles of this presentation that He loves you. But He didn't come here to accuse you that the Lord God in the person of Jesus is real, that He did die for your salvation, for your forgiveness. And you know that the Bible is true. In your heart, you, you feel it. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, your, your job is to receive that love. And by receiving the, that love, you are going to surrender and say, Jesus, I, I believe in you. But I want you to be not just my Savior. I want you to be my King. And I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my everything. And that is the right attitude, my friend. The right attitude, as you can see on the scripture here on the screen, John 3, 16, God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not be lost but have eternal life. What are you waiting, my friend? It's very simple. Open your heart. That, that's all that I'm asking you. Open your heart. Don't close your heart. And you ask me, but, but Gian, how do I open and close my heart? I don't get it. Well, remember this. Your heart has a door. Nobody can open it from outside. The door of your heart only can be opened from the inside. You just open your heart intentionally yeah but I get it but I still don't get it okay let me tell you this way very simple you go to a to a meeting any function there are people that you like and people that you dislike those that you dislike for whatever reason you close your heart towards them but those that you like you open your heart you are willing to talk you are willing to mingle with you are willing to listen to them you are willing to even exchange phone numbers and become friends that is how you open your heart you are willing to begin a relationship open your heart to the lord god receive his forgiveness the god god 
the Father, He sent His Son, Jesus, to die for you. Just open your heart to Him and say, Okay, Lord God, I will believe this, that Jesus is your Son, and today I let your Holy Spirit come and dwell in me to show me more and more of your greatness. Because the Lord God is great. He is that great, my friend, that if you today are struggling with your health, here on the screen you can see this passage from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 5. And I want you to understand that the Lord Jesus, the day that He died, He was paying the price, not just for your salvation, but also for your healing. Jesus was being punished for what we did. He was crushed because of our guilt. He took the punishment we deserved, and this brought us peace. We were healed because of His pain. Because of the pain of Jesus, you can walk in freedom. You can walk in healing. You can, you can walk with peace and joy. You can walk in life knowing that you are forgiven. Knowing that your repentance and your faith and your humility are bringing you to this place now where you can just be a different person. And from there, enjoy the rest of your life. Because it's the desire of the Lord God that you will enjoy everything. Now, let me invite you for the following Sunday, August 27th. The title of the message will be God's Energy in You. Oh, my friend, let me tell you, once you hear that teaching, you will understand how wonders of God in you will make you a person absolutely strong and energetic. God's energy in you in the following Sunday. On September 3rd, I'm going to be talking about relationships, men and wife in marriage. It's an interesting topic that I hope to see you here. This is what I have for you today, and I want you to please share this message with your friends. All that you need to do is, whatever you are watching, look for the little share button. Click there and share it with somebody. Remember, if you have any questions or any topics that you want me to teach about, just send me an email, info at thechurch.us. This is what I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. One of the most wonderful things in the Bible is the promise from God to a believer to be abundantly blessed when the believer gives to the Lord the first fruits of his work and labors. Learn this promise in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. Bring me the 10% of your income and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that it will not ruin the produce of your land, and your vine in your field would not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of Armies. And you can have access to our 24 hours programming, video and audio. If you want to watch our 24 hour video, the website is giantv.mygiancarlo.com. I see that. <laughs> and also, if you prefer audio only, it's here. VictoryRadio.us, 24-7, serving you with all of our hearts. Victory Radio is now available 24-7. Visit our website, www.victoryradio.us. Great music, positive messages, optimism to keep you company while you work, or when you drive, or when you are at home cooking. Faith is what you need. Faith comes when you hear the right thing. Victory Radio is the new thing. Find us on the website, www.victoryradio.us. Have a great rest of your day. If you own a Roku TV, a Roku TV device, an Apple TV device, or own a Fire Stick, we invite you to install the Gion TV app. With the Gion TV app installed on your TV, you will be able to watch all the videos from the comfort of your home and be inspired with our programs. Enjoy music, 
inspirational videos, Bible teachings, and beautiful videos that will keep your tank of faith full all the time at the touch of a button. Remember G on TV. Receive the inspiration to achieve your calling in life. By G and Carlo Vitutoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwork. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Also you took all of my tears You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you change my world You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you change my world You are Even when I feel that I'm ready Ready to quit and give up Ready to throw the towel of my life away It is on those days when I realize How weak and fool I can be Considering my situation I cry out where are you, God? You promised me to be with me here all the time. You said that I will not be alone. You promised me that you will be with me no matter what, no matter what. And I know you are mine here with me all the time. Sustain my life. You are by my side.
my heart betrayed me in my greatest desperation when I thought that everything was lost I saw very far away your light shining at the distance you make me believe that there was hope for me it was your light in the night to give me life it's your light some days I felt ready to sink but every time you rescued me my own tears became the ink to write the prayers of my me Disappointed you quite many times. I failed, I messed up big time. Acting right was not my style. spring the winter is over no more snow my heart you filled with your love now in my home I hear the birds I see the kids playing boys and Like the ocean wants the moon, like the grass needs the rain, come and take my pain away. How can somebody fix my heart? My life is falling apart, if only there was somebody who sees that I'm not. Nobody, how can somebody fix my heart? My life is falling apart, if only there was somebody who sees that I'm not. Nobody, sing to me a love song again, fly me on your airplane. Be my shining star tonight I need you badly in my life It is absolutely amazing what I am feeling Never before I experienced what you have done to me. I know that in the past I didn't see things as I do now. But honestly, 
you have changed everything for me. And uh, I don't want to let it go. I don't want you to go anywhere. Stay here with me, by me, because you make me feel alive. And I know that you love me, and I love you. I love you with all of my heart. I belong to you. You brought me a new life, a life that is absolutely profound, real, and true. I feel alive, you make me fly, I'm in the clouds, you make me alive, this is my night, I'm gonna fight, I feel the wind, I'm gonna win, I feel alive, you make me fly, I'm in the clouds, you make me alive. Beneath the moon, oh starry night You came to me, you rescued me, you are so right You are my starry night You came to me, you rescued me you are so right, you are my Sabrina. Thank you for investing time with Victory Church Odessa. Feel free to subscribe to our channel here on this platform. Also, you can go to our website, vchurch.us, to connect with the rest of the platforms where you can follow us. Our address is 2400 West 81st Street, Odessa, Texas, 79764. Our Sunday worship service begins at 10 a.m. Our phone number is 432-614-9798. Our email address is info at vchurch.us. Feel free to share this program with your family and friends. Until next time, we wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Many blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus.